sociological perspectives. Now, this is a, a new course we are trying to start, and we start with the, what does it mean by sociological perspectives. Now, perspective is a, a, a vision, an outlook, or an approach, or imagination of uh, reality. Now, in our situation, the reality could be the whole society, it could be the working of society, it could be the, let's say, different sections of the society, parts of the society, different institutions of the society. So, perspective apply, uh, implies an approach to the understanding of that reality. And in our example, we might say the, the society as a whole or maybe uh, from its parts. So, sociological theory is actually talking about the reality. It tells something about the working of this uh, reality. Now, that uh, might be uh, presented verbally, that could be presented in written. Now, that's uh, when I say it is presented, that's the image of the reality, the, the vision of the society. So, that's, that's what uh, the theory implies. It implies the uh, assumptions about the society. When we write these assumptions or propositions uh, in a logically arranged form, that's actually the theory. So, by perspective, it implies uh, an orientation for looking at various features of uh, social world, which can eventually be translated into, let's say, a coherent kind of, uh, let's, uh, a theory or, uh, uh, let's say, uh, an outlook or an imagination. So, there are different ways of understanding the society, its working, its interpretation, and then how from the interpretations we move on to explanation. Explanation implies uh, how one thing leads to another one, and uh, there is some kind of interconnection between, let's say, different segments, different parts of the society. So the idea is to develop some general, let's say, principles of the functioning of society or the operation of the society. So when sociologists do sociology, they approach their subject with certain assumptions. Uh, these assumptions about the reality, assumption about the society. So they emphasize particular research method and they have particular types of questions they want to be answered. So that is how we look at uh, looking at things which sociologists uh, 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 present in the form of sociological theories, uh, the, just like differences in the way theories are formulated. So we can uh, approach uh, for the formulation of theories deductively or from inductively. Uh, in certain situations, maybe both deductive and inductive could uh, be used uh, uh, same time. So when we use the word deductively or inductively, we are talking about the uh, kind of logic which is being applied. So as you know, deductive is uh, from general, moving from general to specific, whereas inductive is from um, specific to general. Therefore, sociological theory may look at a group of perspectives for the understanding of human being. So we could look at society from this perspective or that per perspective. There could be a number of perspectives. So the goal is to develop principles that govern the functioning of the society, understanding those uh, let's say, principles which are 
instrumental in the functioning of the society, in the working of the society. That society is a uh, uh, work in a smooth kind of manner. So there is some kind of equilibrium, some kind of balance, and that is how the societies uh, try to move. So sociologists have looked at society from different perspectives. So let's look at uh, four important perspectives, and the first of these is the, uh, from the angle of the analysis. So the first perspective could be from the level of analysis. So they look at society on the basis of subject matter. Is it, uh, uh, they, do they look at the subject matter as a, as a macro, at a macro kind of level or at a micro kind of level? So both these could be applied. So one uh, uh, perspective may be uh, considered as uh, macro-sociological perspective, the other could be micro-sociological perspective. With respect to macro-sociology, it is concerned with large-scale characteristics of uh, social structure and roles. So it's, uh, it, it focuses at, at the society from a general kind of perspective, uh, a broad kind of perspective. So they might be looking at the society as a whole rather than the pieces. From whole, they try to make the generalizations. With respect to micro-sociology, we see that they are concerned with person-to-person -person encounters. So the, when we try to study and analyze, uh, our focus is at the individual or uh, at, mm, at the group level rather than uh, the society as a whole or the system as a whole. So when we have these uh, two uh, approaches, that's the macro sociology or micro sociology, we see that the different perspectives fall in these uh, two broad categories. For example, functionalism and conflict theory, they are usually concerned with the overall characteristics of the social structure and uh, they look at the general nature of uh, social institutions. So that is uh, at a broader level, that's at the macro level kind of situation. So we see that uh, within functionalism, there might be uh, different kind of, uh, uh, let's say, approaches, but still they do not ignore the individuals which might be instrumental in the decision making. So the perspectives of symbolic interactionism and phenomenology uh, examine human interaction in the minutest detail. And when they move from individual up, then we are focusing at the micro level. So actions, experiences, and perceptions at individual level are their focus, are the priority that's the important thing for them. That doesn't mean that they, uh, let's say, finish right over there. They try to connect from this, uh, let's say, micro level to, let's say, the bigger level as well. So they do not ignore the social pres uh, prescriptions. They try to connect them as well. So rational choice theories may venture on both macro as well as micro approaches. Uh, for example, Blau focuses on individuals' decisions and choices, yet he links these with the structural qualities of the society, how they become part of it and then becomes legitimate. Second view could be uh, that uh, human beings uh, might be considered as uh, uh, something predictable that their behavior is uh, predictable. Is it primarily determined by the given environment? Uh, functionalist and conflict theorists uh, usually talk in this kind of, uh, uh, let's say, viewpoint that the environment determines the behavior of the individuals. Or is the 
the human behavior governed by creativity means uh, their behavior is uh, passive that is it is uh, all determined by the outside forces but here the other angle is that it is not entirely uh, determined by the outside environment or the outside forces the individual himself or herself is also a creative kind of uh, entity. So symbolic interactionism and phenomenology they talk about me and I. So me is coming from outside what others want me to be but then they also focus at I that I means that the individuality that the individual person has its own way of looking at it. So their they, in their opinion behavior is unpredictable. So not necessarily if we know the environment we can simply say that this person's behavior is going to be in this direction. So their emphasis is on, is on human social action that is uh, creativity. So that is uh, how we look at uh, the second uh, let us say uh, vision where we view how human beings uh, uh, behave is their behavior determined by the circumstances or they themselves have their something about their own creativity.